how do you know what the perfect color for dark skin tones or a tiger or a black Labrador or a white poodle or the pink rose that you're working on is? Well, in this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how you can pick the colors that you need for any project you're working on. I'm Kirsty Rebecca, and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. The first thing that you need to know is that your color choices are not that important. A lot of people assume that if they know the exact colors to use, then that's what will make their artwork look realistic, when in reality it's really not that important for realistic artwork. Now I know this tutorial is about choosing colors, but hear me out because you need to understand this first. If you take a look at some examples of my drawings, which are on the left, against the original reference photo on the right, you'll notice that my colors in the drawing are usually very different from the reference but the drawing still looks realistic, and that's because the values are right, so how dark or how light that colour is, not because the colour that I chose was 100% accurate to the reference photo. This last one is actually a really great example of that. My drawing on the left has completely different colours in comparison to the photo that I was actually drawing from on the right. And the reason that this still looks realistic is because my values are right. You could choose a number of blues for the same area as long as it's not too dark or too light in comparison to that part of the reference photo. In this comparison, you can really see what I mean. There are a lot of blues that are the correct value and I could have used a number of those different blues and it would have turned out just fine. So when you're choosing your color, a blue for example, Look at how dark or light that blue is to match how dark or light that area is on your reference photo. People ask me what the perfect color for a certain subject is, like a tiger or dark skin tone or a rose or whatever they're working on, and in reality there isn't a perfect color for any given subject. It's going to change depending on the lighting that that subject is in, and also the colors change throughout the subject anyway. So just because you used a specific color in a certain area in a shadow on your subject, doesn't mean that you're going to use that same color in every shadow area. So here I've added different filters to the same reference photo, so it's a really good example of what I'm talking about. They all do look realistic, but they are all slightly different and will require a different set of colors. And this is the same concept if I took a photo of a person and then put them in different lighting, and then took another photo of that same person, you're going to have a completely different set of colors to work with. So you can't just use that same skin color for every person. It doesn't work that way. So you may be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but how do I actually know what colors to choose for my artwork then? Well, these next few tips will really help you out with your color choices. They certainly changed how I choose my colors and help make my artwork look more realistic. Before I share these tips, if you'd like to improve your drawing and painting skills even further, then my Patreon channel is the solution for you. From as little as $4 per month, you will have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, charcoal, watercolor, and more. There are tutorials available for a range of subjects like wildlife, birds, landscapes, still life, flowers, and portraits. If you would like to view the entire Patreon tutorial library before joining us, I'll also leave that link in the description for you as well. Not only are my tutorials full length, real time, and fully narrated with clear instructions and explanations, but you will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline, and a list of suppliers, including the exact color names I'm using, so you really can relax and follow along every step of the way. Every month, I upload brand new tutorials to the Patreon library, so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group, where you can ask questions or advice, or share your artwork, and you can talk to other members in the Patreon community. And the best part is that there are no lock-in contracts, so you can upgrade or downgrade to a different tier level, or you can cancel your pledge at any time if Patreon isn't right for you. So why not give it a go? The link is in the description if you want to check it out. One of my favorite ways to make sure that I am on the right track to picking a similar color is to create these color swatch examples. If you remember over on Patreon, I do have a real-time tutorial showing you how to create these color swatches with your own reference photo, but I basically just used Photoshop or a free online editor to pick out the color in a certain area with an eyedropper tool. 
and then I literally just painted a swatch of that color to the side with a line going to that area. That way you can really clearly see which color is in which area. Even amongst the shadow areas, there are different colors and same for the highlights. It's not all one color for every highlight or every shadow. And I think that's a major misconception people have is that you can pick a perfect color for a certain subject and then pick one color for the highlights and one color for the shadows. And it really doesn't work like that. It may be fine if you're doing illustrations or sort of cartoony style work, but for realism, there are multiple different colors over your entire piece. So I use this color swatch example to match up the pencils or the pastels I have in my set. And like I was saying earlier, the colors don't have to be perfect, just generally close. If you're struggling to know what colors to pick from your set to match to those swatches that you've done, then you can go one step further and print your color swatch samples and then go ahead and physically swatch all of the colors that you have that you think might be close to each color swatch. And then you can choose your colors from there, keeping in mind how dark or light that color is and not focusing so much on having the exact same color as what you see in the swatches. You're never going to have the perfect color in your set of pencils or pastels or whatever you're working in. So you're going to need to overlap colors and layer them on top of each other. So if you only have a mid-tone blue color, for example, but you need a light blue in that area, then you'll probably need to lay your blue down that you have and then put a lighter color or a white over it to create that value that you need in that certain area. Another great tip that I like to use throughout my projects is to actually edit the saturation on my reference photo. So basically I'll dramatically increase the saturation in a photo editor, which really helps bring out some of those colors that may not be as obvious in the original reference photo. Obviously you wouldn't be able to include all of those colors, but you can subtly include some of those colors that you see in certain areas in your own artwork. You don't need to follow the exact colors in your reference. A lot of it comes down to personal preference, but if you're just starting out, following these tips will really help you out a lot. For me personally, I started out by following the colors that I could see in the reference photo, the color swatch sample, and also the high saturation version. But as I started to create more pieces, I began to choose colors that I liked the look of and colors that I personally wanted to add into my work. For example, in a lot of my white or black animals, I will add quite a lot of blues and any subjects that I have quite a lot of an orange tone in there or brown, I might use purples and magentas throughout that piece. The tutorial on the screen is a really great example of where I used many colors like reds and purples and blues that definitely weren't in the original reference photo. So check out that tutorial if you wanna see how these tips actually apply to working on an actual piece of artwork. So click on that and I'll see you over there.